Hi, Sitsuki here. Today I want to talk about why I purchased my Sony A7R 3 in four months of its release. Normally it would take me about a year to a year and a half to purchase any new camera, but this time around it only took four months. I'll give you five reasons why I'm doing that. Let's go through the list. Number one, I actually had a chance to actually uh, try this camera uh, when it was released. It was uh, November the, I can't remember the exact day, but November 2017, there was a uh, expo. It's called Pro Fusion Expo 2017. And uh, there was a Sony camera there, uh, as well as other gears. Uh, and so I went there and try out the Sony A7R 3 And I, I loved it. Uh, I almost purchased it right away. Uh, but at that point in time, I thought, hmm, I think it should be tested more before I do anything because, you know, like in all my gears, I do not like to buy anything new right away. I don't want to be the guinea pigs to be able to, you know, test these cameras. I, want, I don't want to be the beta testers. So I got to make sure that it's going to work fine. So I had a chance, you know, I spent about two, three minutes holding it, pressing the button, feeling for it. And I was quite impressed. It felt to me like it was an A7R2, which I had, and uh, A6500. Uh, so I had these two cameras before, and I was like, wow, imagine having those two cameras and, and put it in one camera. That would be awesome. I, I, I would have to sell my A7R2 uh, and A6500 and in order to purchase this. So I'll talk about that later. But So that was, you know, it, it felt really good. And... And um, the reason, I'll tell you right now why I was impressed with it and I almost purchased uh, there and then, but I didn't, uh, I had to wait a bit longer. So the reason why I uh, thought about getting it was like it was 10 frames per second, just similar to the A6500. The fast buffering, I noticed the A7R2, uh, you know, when you take a picture, you have to wait uh, one or two seconds, you know, to view it, whereas the A7R3, you could view it right away, which is great. Um, they upgrade the 1080p from, um, uh, was it? Uh, it it was only 60 frames per second. Now it's 120 frames per second. So, like the A7S2, and of course they ha they have the 30 uh, 42 megapixels, um, and the better low lights in full frame. So previously you had to set it to APS-C mode in order to get a better low light uh, video uh, recording. So now full frame is as good. Okay, of course you have the 4K video recording. The IBIS um, image stabilization in body stabilization inside the camera itself um, uh, the battery life has improved obviously twice and the uh, there's two slots now so it is a professional camera so that was like, worth upgrading for sure uh, but the problem is of course I didn't want to buy it right away and the reason for that which gets to my second point okay so the first point that you have to try it first and I did and I tried that and and I waited you know thank goodness I waited because the second point is this um, instead of waiting uh, a year and a half or a year to purchase it it only took me four months the reason for that is there was a lot of great reviews on YouTube so now I'm gonna name a few uh, influencer on YouTube that uh, made me make that decision so Tony Chelsea you, you might have heard of them uh, Jeff Remus uh, Jason Lanier Dave Dugdale uh, that one camera guy, Jason Vong, uh, Dustin Abbott, uh, what's the other? Max Uroff. That's definitely my. F they, he basically um, nailed the coffin. He he made he made sure uh, regarding the overheating issue. He made a, a decision for me really because what happened was um, I didn't want to buy it because you know Sony. I know Sony ca uh, cameras in general. Uh, tend to have an issue of overheating um, and you can check that out uh, in different um, uh, websites and uh, YouTubes and it's known for that and so I'm like if I'm gonna purchase a, a $4,000 camera it better be working it better not overheat right so Max did a, a, a quick demonstration that at around 40, uh, 74 75 degrees uh, after over an hour it didn't overheat and there was no even uh, a, a sign a warning on that now of course this is not uh, definite because you know you have to take this camera out in the hot sun like say 90 degrees right but if it's at 75 degrees and it doesn't show a uh, light uh, warning uh, after an hour I think that's a pretty good bet so I thought okay there we go overheating issue is probably solved now so that was my second reason the review 
on the uh, A7R3 was much, much improved and, and uh, well documented. So I thought, okay, th I don't need to wait a an, an year and year and a half to purchase A7R3. Um, you know, I have enough information from YouTubers. I should be able to purchase now. Of course, the third <laughs> thing is that, you know, even at, um, now this is after the convention, right? After the uh, expo. Uh, now it's, the, the price just went up $4,000. Because if I purchased there and then, it would be only 3700 plus tax. And if I purchase afterward, it'd be 4000 plus tax. I'm like, oh man, I missed the opportunity. So I'm like, oh well, you know what? It was a good decision anyway. I, I can wait a year. So what happened was uh, I went to um, a camera store called Henry's and they actually happened to have a camera, an open box A7R3 for $400 off. And you still have a, a one year warranty. I'm like, wow, okay. So now I have a deal, okay? I can get this camera. I know this camera is really good. Uh, I already tried it out and the reviewer said it's good and they test the overeating issue. That was done. And now number three reason, of course, for me to be convinced that I have to purchase it it has to be at, you know, three, three, four hundred dollar off, and it was so an open box A seven R three, four hundred dollar off. So I'm like, I'm saving four hundred dollars like that. And you know, if I don't like it in a year and a, a half a year from now, there's still half a year warranty. I could sell it off at, you know, you know, at five, uh, three thousand five hundred, and I'll get most of my money back. So that's my uh, logical reason. I'm like, okay, well, just do it now, purchase it. Okay, so that was number three. Number four reason, of course, is the lens. You know, if you if you start out with, like, say, you're coming from Canon or you're coming from a Nikon, uh, I don't know if that's a good idea, especially if you don't have the lens for the Sony. You know, if if you're a uh, a Sony um, a camera person, you know about the price of the the lens. They're more expensive than a Nikon and Canon. So if you don't have the the lens yet, I think you should reevaluate first. For example, I Nikon. Uh, these uh, 850 is actually quite a good camera as well as the Canon um, I think it's 5D Mark IV although I think that's a little bit outdated now but I would say Nikon D850 uh, 850 is a very very good com uh, camera and I think comparable to this uh, Sony A7R 3 so if you're with Ni Nikon if you have that camera I think you, st you will stick with that if you don't have a lens so that's why my fourth reason is that you have to have the lens and I did actually you know uh, um, before I had Sony I had uh, Nikon but it was the APS-C I think it was the um, the D5200 and I sold that off I had only one kit lens for it and then I, I heard about the Sony cameras and you know for videos is really good so I decided to stick with Sony but the problem I had initially was the lens. Like, wow, I couldn't believe how much lens was ex so expensive. So over the uh, year and a half, um, I decided to you know slowly purchase used uh, lens, and so I accumulated. So I would buy, sell, buy, sell until I get the lens that I wanted. So now I have um, uh, Sony 28mm uh, f2 fe lens, the 55 f 1.8 Zeiss Sony lens. Um, I have even the A mount lens using the LA EA4 adapter that allow me to um, uh, adapt uh, 135 mils f1.8 Zeiss lens and as well as a 28 uh, 70 um, G lens from Minolta so I have the nice lens already so I was like okay now I just need a good body so I had an a7R2 and a6500 but because the a7R3 came out I thought okay you know, if I just sell those two, I should be able to get a 7 r 3 And in fact, I was, another strategy I did was I was able to sell the a 7 r 2 before the a 7 r 3 came out. So I had, I had, this decision making was like well ahead of time, right? I didn't make a lot, you know, uh, you know, last minute decision. I had to plan it all out. I thought, okay, I know the a 7 r 3 is coming out. You know, this is back in no, no, uh, October, right? So I said, okay, I better sell a 7 r 2 right away and AC500 to, to get the money I wanted to buy this camera, right? So all these was planned out. I had to sell my drones, and I'll talk about my other gears as well um, that I purchased, but I sold all my, all my uh, big drones and all that, and you know, accumulate all these um, uh, money in order to purchase a Sony A7R3. So that was in place. So definitely the, I had the lens, so 
making the purchase was much easier because I don't have to worry about lens now. I have to just need the body and I just now get the lens. I mean, I have the lens and now I just have to combine those two together. So that's very important, okay? So that was the fourth reason you need to have the lens. If you don't, if you're gonna transition, I would suggest that you get the lens first, at least a couple of good ones, and then maybe you think about buying the camera, unless you have the money right away. Because remember, if you're getting a good lens, like the G Master and the camera, you're looking at around $7,000. Yeah, a good lens. Like for example, the, the 2470 G Master lens, uh, 85 f 1.2 or 4 I mean a G master lens um, and this camera yeah you're talking about you know if you have those two lens the G masters you look close to a ten thousand dollars worth of purchase that's a stiff buy okay so um, make sure you have the lens I would say get the lens first before you get the camera if you can unless you know this is uh, something that you uh, you know you have a lot of money to spare and you could do that okay and of course, uh, the fifth reason, and I already mentioned a bit about it, is that I sold all my gears, right? My Sony A7R II, my A6500, um, my drones, and I was able to have some money to purchase, and uh, you know, put into this camera here, okay? And as well as other gears, which I'll talk about later on. But so that's my five reasons why I end up getting the A7R III. So it's a quite a good reasons, and if you go through the five uh, reasons, it's quite logical. And I'm fully convinced that I made the right decision. I hope you uh, make the right decision as well. Uh, you don't have to listen to me. Listen to your brain and your heart and go with it, right? And write it down. Write down why you want to buy it and what's the reason. Of course, <laughs> of course, the last reason is you're, you know, you're you know, a professional photographer and you make money from it. Well, yeah, purchase it if uh, you have the money for it. But for me, I'm uh, just pro-consumers. I'm a uh, camera enthusiast. And um, yeah, for me, it's a good purchase. Uh, so thanks for watching, educate2.com.